And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Well, here's something that gets people excited, and that's the Scoundrels of Skullport. This is the first expansion, well, maybe the only expansion, I don't know, to the very, very popular Lords of Waterdeep game from Wizards of the Coast. A board game that's set in a Dungeons and Dragons world, but it basically was a light uh, worker placement game that it seemed like lots of people enjoyed. I very much enjoyed it myself, and I was very much looking forward to how this expansion tied things in. What did it add? What this expansion adds is a few modules and a few other things. In fact, let's get to showing you what's in the expansion, then we'll talk about it a bit. First things first, we see the two boxes, and they're similar boxes, although this one has that half lid on it, and this one has a full lid, smaller, but also has a very nice pristine uh, insert, just like the original one did, where everything fit in perfectly in that one, everything fits perfectly in the new one. Problem is, that means you can't combine the new one and the expansion, the expansion in your base game, unless you get rid of the insert, but I suppose that that's perfectly acceptable. So what is in this expansion? Well, first of all, there is a six player. Uh, there's uh, pieces for a six player, uh, a gray piece, and it's the gray hands faction that are included with the game. Basically just the same as everything else. There's also extra pieces for each color in case you want to play an epic game. In an epic game you use, it's longer and you have more people. Basically, if you play a two player game, you'll play with an extra person for each person, so they gave one of every color for that purpose. There's also these tokens here, and let me put a couple of these in my hand. In this game, there's gonna be a lot more resources, especially with six players, and so these simply count as five resources of a specific type if you'd like to use those. So those are basically the extra pieces, except for these mysterious blue pieces. Now you'll notice that there's two sides here to this expansion. That's because there is skull, the Skullport module that's included and the Undermountain module. You can use one or both of them together. In the Undermountain module, you add this board to the bottom of the board. This adds a few more buildings that everyone can go to. Here you get two intrigue cards, a cube of your choice, or a black and an orange cube. And here you can take a quest and then play an intrigue card. This is a really cool spot, something very unique and different for the game. It also comes with several new buildings and several new cards. We'll look at a few of them. We have here one of the buildings. This is something that uh, is a new concept for the game. This basically says uh, you get eight coins here, then you place two coins from the supply on each of two different action spaces. Or this one here, where you get four black cubes and then you place one on the, from the supply in two different action spaces. What that means is I can place those two uh, anywhere I want. I use these little guys instead of cubes. And then when someone goes there next time, for example, they go here, they'll get the two intrigue cards and the black cube. And you can put those on your own buildings. It's, it's, it's a neat concept. And these are neat buildings that can be built. Uh, there's several of them here, uh, purple cubes. There's also ones that let you do things like this, where I can get an orange and a black cube and then play an intrigue card. Well, that's a great building. Or this one here that lets you play three different intrigue cards. So these are nice new buildings that are added to the game. The game also comes with new lords, and this is something I really like because the original lords were very samey, these add difference. This guy just gets three for every non-mandatory quest, so for every quest he gets three. This guy gets four for every specific quest to this Undermountain expansion. They have that little um, beholder uh, symbol on them. And this guy here gets you five points for each quest that's worth at least 10. Now, that's a cool thing because in this game, there are now quests. Look at this quest here. You have to get rid of five white cubes, two orange, two blacks, and a purple. That is a lot, but look at that reward. 40 points, 40 points, 40 points, 40 points. That's pretty neat and very exciting. And you know in this game that getting a lot of points is not the end of the world uh, to the other players. But that's not all. I mean, the 40 points are cool, 
but these are much cooler. I like these. This one here is a white and orange and four cubes of your choice, but you draw an intrigue card for each purple cube. So you'd like to use four purple cubes if possible. Or this one here, which gives you 12 points and then gives you an extra 10 if you pay another four black cubes. Or this one here that's eight and then gives you three orange cubes, two black cubes, and three black cubes if you immediately spend $10. So I like these. Here's another one, 10 and 10 more points if you spend four more orange cubes. But besides these, there's also quests that give great rewards. Like this one here, it gives you 12 points and then cubes of your choice, which almost guarantees you're gonna finish the next quest. Or this one here, uh, whenever you put someone in a building, you also get the owner benefit. Or here you get 10 points and you get an intrigue card that you can play each of them immediately. Wah! That's so cool. But this one's even cooler. 12 points, uh, 13 points, and all the buildings are yours that are, that are available for sale. Or here, you can put someone in a building that is up for sale and use it. There's also new intrigue cards. I like these a lot. Here, you, you, there's just different things like this one lets you take first place and you also get money. Or here I can give my opponent, one of my opponents four dollars coins and get eight points. Or give my opponent a white cube and get eight points. Or steal cubes from an opponent. There's new mandatory quests. This one doesn't even get points. It gives them an intrigue card, but still, pain in the neck. And so over here, draw two intrigue cards and each one I can immediately use it as part of an action. This part of the expansion is the the up under mountain is like bigger and better and better, just lots of cool things. Now the Skullport module adds two boards. It has a whole corruption track here, and then it has some more buildings. But let's take a look at the corruption track. Throughout this expansion, you will be taking corruption. When you take corruption, you take it from the lowest number spot on the board. And whatever number is completely uncovered is the current value of corruption. So right now, corruption is worth minus one, you take these, now corruption is minus two. So you have to be very cautious. As you take more and more corruption, it becomes negative points for everyone. There are lots of ways to put corruption on the board, but there's also ways when you have corruption to get rid of it completely from the game, which doesn't put it back on the board and then keeps the cost of corruption high. If people go corruption crazy and take it off the minus nine spot and you need to take more corruption, you just automatically lose 10 points. And I can't imagine anybody wanting to do that. So you don't want corruption, but whoa! Look at these buildings here. The, the slaver's market gives you two orange and two black and a corruption. Man, if you need those, that's worth it. Or two cubes of your choice for corruption. Or a quest intrigue and five gold coins for corruption. Wah! And that's not it. There's other things that you can build. I mean, here we have this building here, which gives you three black cubes and five gold coins for corruption or a cube of your choice, five gold coins and a corruption, and you get a face-up quest. Here, one of each cube for corruption. Here, pay a cube for three purples and a corruption, six and a corruption. Ah, oh, it's so tempting to do these. And even more so, when you can use buildings like this to remove them from the game or to return them to the board. You know, here I can return a corruption and then play an influence. That's something that people are going to want to do, and that allows them to take corruption. There are also new lords, as, or, as we've shown earlier. Here's a just an evil beholder, and this guy gets four points into the game for each corruption he has. Basically, effectively, hopefully canceling out the points that they lose from corruption, while at the same time getting a lot of the cool benefits from the buildings that give corruption. This guy, four for every non-mandatory quest from this expansion. And then this is a cool new water deep lord where she basically picks one of the types and gets six points afterwards. Now there are some regular quests in this game, in this expansion, but many of the quests in the expansion have to do with corruption. For example, this one here, you get eight only eight points for it, but you can remove three corruption from your time from the game. This one's an easy way to get 20 points, but also gives you two corruption. This one gives 18 points, two orange cubes, a purple cube, and an intrigue card, and three corruption. So are you going to do these new quests? I mean, they're really cool, and they often have really good rewards, but they give corruption. There's also, again, more mandatory quests in this one, and then there's more intrigue cards. I can just take three corruption off the track or move them in the game. And if other people have a lot of corruption, that basically increases them. But there's also cards that let you get rid of your own corruption 
and deal with people who have more corruption than you. One of the ones I like a lot here is his honorable example. I get six points if each opponent has more corruption than you. That's just a neat card. Or each opponent who has more corruption than you takes an extra corruption. So that's basically what is in this expansion. As I said, you can uh, use both of these modules together and do it. If you do so, you're supposed to take out a certain number of buildings and intrigue cards and quest cards from the base game. So what do you use from this expansion? The short answer is this, everything. You know, there's, there's many times where there's modules, uh, modular expansions, and yeah, I say, well, I like this module, I like this one, I use this one. This I just use them both. And, and here's the thing, the corruption thing is a fascinating addition, okay? It's not something I know that I would spring maybe on new people, but having this idea of losing points is a pretty cool thing, especially to get rewards. It simulates this greed, like, I want that, I pay for it later, but I'm not paying for it now, and I might not have to pay for it ever. That's cool, and I like it a lot. It's a really neat thing, and the track is interesting. However, if you add just that expansion, the corruption becomes almost, to me, too much of a point of the game. I like adding both modules because the corruption then is still there and is still very evident, but not as focal of a point. Also, man, the variety of buildings, the different things that will show up, the, the different quests that will show up, the intrigue cards. The intrigue deck rocks now. There's so many cool different intrigue things. And when you put both boards out, there's so many different spaces to go to. Uh, there's lots of, it's, it's, it's super fun. The epic game, the six player, I was a little concerned. I said, will the six player drag the game out? It adds a little bit of time, but it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was. And I, I enjoy that. I enjoyed the more options. This took Lords of Waterdeep, adds the corruption mechanic to it, which is a new and different mechanic, which adds a lot to the game. But it also adds some cool, I love those 40 point quests. You know, your first thought is, these are overpowered. No, they're not. It takes a whole lot to be able to pull one of them off. And every game I've played so far where people have gotten a 40 point quest, several of them, those people not won the game because those, oh, those special abilities, it's neat. This has taken Lords of Water Deep, which was a game I already enjoyed quite a bit and adds what I say more of the same and then one easy to understand mechanic. Fasc fascinating and wonderful and absolutely perfect for an expansion to do. My only question is now, how do I fit them all in one box? But I'll tell you this, it's going to happen because I really like this expansion. Thumbs up from me. Great expansion. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut up, Lord! Boop. Boop.